Coming up on show 554, what EV are the Germans going mad for? A new use for hydrogen and another domino falls. Plus, we're talking another state joining California's ZEV program and how do you fancy a solar roof? Those stories, plus your answers to question of the week, all coming up on the Sunday edition of this podcast. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. Sunday, 18th of August today. My name is Martin Lee. This is what you missed in the last 24 hours. Plus, your answers to question of the week. Thank you to myev.com for helping make this show a new look and a new design to myev.com. So if you haven't checked it out recently in the last couple of weeks, a visual treat for your eyes at myev.com. Welcome to a new executive producer. That's you, Jim Morris. Hello, Jim. A new executive producer, William Langhorn. Both Jim and William uh, are now exec producers. And Cobus Berger is a new producer of the show. Thank you so much. So, which EV are the Germans going loopy over? They just can't get enough of one particular EV. Their plug-in market continues pretty well by the way it's on track in july 9233 registrations full electric vehicles up 136 percent says this article plug-in electric vehicles phevs are stuttering a bit in germany though and according to clean technica it is indeed the long running and domestically made e-golf which is doing the business it won the monthly bestseller award in october 2018 and the veteran vw e-golf managed to win last month's trophy again with a record performance to boot e-golfs sold 1007 in germany the first time the german ev scored a four-digit performance it seems volkswagen's current bread and butter plug-in model has more aces up its sleeve Another German model hitting record results is the BMW i3, 967 in July. And the Renault Zoe still sold 910 units, even though everyone knows they're now only a couple of weeks in Germany, a couple of weeks away from getting the brand new ZE50. The new Renault Zoe with the CCS plug, uh, longer range, bigger battery, lovely interior, by the way. Like a little baby Tesla in there with the big portrait screen. Zoe's 910 registrations, an impressive performance for a car that has been around in this guise in two different battery forms, but otherwise the inside mostly the same for quite a few years now. Interesting thing about the e-golf as well, selling so many, wouldn't you just wait if you really want to buy an electrified or a pure electric VW, wouldn't you wait for the ID3, or maybe you just want it now? Because let's face it, the ID3 is still months and months away from being in your driveway. One thing is for sure, the Germans really love that VW e Golf. Not the best spec'd, technologically advanced EV out there. Even VW would admit that. But inside, you know what? It feels like a Golf because, for all intents and purposes, it is just like any other Golf. Before the Toyota Mirai, before the Honda Clarity, before the Hyundai Nexo, we are talking fuel cell vehicles here, before those, there was a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle called the Alpha, but it only had two wheels. It was a bike, and it was demonstrating that hydrogen could go further than battery-boosted e-bikes. Now France's Pragma Industries has introduced Generation 2, the Alpha 2.0, a new version of the bike that's good for 93 miles of assisted range on a single charge versus a typical range, about 30 miles for e-bikes that use a lithium-ion battery, says Green Car Reports. Well, the Alpha 2.0 combines a 150-watt fuel cell with a 150-watt-hour lithium-ion battery pack to buffer that energy flow. So this is the interesting thing about fuel cell vehicles. You still need the battery. They just add another bit of technology on top. Why not just charge the battery? Uh, The 36-volt cell, by the way, The electric motor, capable of providing... Sorry, the 36-volt motor uh, will do 250 watts of electric assistance, 
Two litres of hydrogen gas can be stored at 300 bar. Uh, it fills in two minutes, which is often the headline that fans of hydrogen like to give. Oh, it fills in this many minutes. Uh, Pragma has partnered with Ergo Zup, a hydrogen conversion company, to make available a compact hydrogen fueling station. Is this an interesting idea, or is this technology for technology's sake? You have to ask the question, what's hydrogen good for? E-bikes might not be the first thing you say, might not be the second, third, fourth, fifth, or even tenth thing. You know, boats, big buses, maybe even planes one day. That kind of makes sense in my brain. Big, heavy plant machinery as well. Nah, maybe. I kind of get it where you don't want to carry a big battery around, but you want to carry lots of hydrogen that then charges the smaller battery on an e-bike. Interesting. Right, well, moving on, and a company that really has embraced fuel cell as their future, uh, they are now having to launch an electric car because, as you and I have been saying for a very long time, for cars, battery electric vehicles are the answer. It makes the most sense. It's not, you know, BEVs are not some kind of pie-in-the-sky future when we spend hundreds and hundreds of billions, trillions possibly, thousands of billions, on a hydrogen infrastructure to cope with moving people around on hydrogen power when you realise that just about within your eye line right now, maybe you've got to look around a little bit, there's a plug socket because electricity is everywhere. Well, Mazda is another one that was holding out and pinning their future on hydrogen, but now they're making an electric car. Looks like we have the first images of the prototype spotted in Norway, says Electric. They've yet to launch an all-electric car, and Mazda executives have talked down EV technology in favour of hydrogen. However, more recently, Mazda has had to announce plans to launch EVs and even to only sell electric cars and hybrids or electrified cars by 2030. The plans have been pushed back, but the Mazda CEO, Akira Maramoto, confirmed earlier this summer that the automaker is now aiming to launch its full electric car sometime 2020, which is why the spy shots of the Mazda electric vehicle have now surfaced on the internet. Incentives are always good. It's always good when states get behind and countries get behind EVs. After a three-day hearing, Colorado's Air Quality Control Commission has decided to approve the adoption of zero emissions vehicles mandate. With a landmark decision, Colorado is now the 10th state to join California's ZEV or ZEV program, which is expected to improve air quality in the region while pushing automakers to expand their EV offerings, says Teslarati. The adoption of the ZEV mandate, which or ZEV mandate, which requires car makers to roll out more zero emissions vehicles, was met with right widespread support from members of the commission. Well done, Colorado. Double thumbs up to you. Let's talk solar as our last bit of news today. And Tesla has relaunched its solar power efforts. And now that includes an option that might be more affordable for homeowners. The company has debuted a rent solar program. If you are a resident of Arizona, California or Connecticut, Massachusetts, New, Ze New Jersey or New Mexico, you can now pay a monthly fee. Rather than that big capital investment, that big upfront purchase, says Engadget. Well, you'll typically pay about $50 a month. That could be $65 in California. But Tesla, well, they do all the hard work. There's no long-term contract. Tesla is simply betting that you'll keep it for long enough for those fees to add up. They don't say, we're signing you up for the next 50 years. They just know that once you have it, you won't want to get rid of it. The biggest cost to the rented system is if you choose you don't want it anymore it's going to be a 1500 bill uh, 1500 dollar bill to restore your reef to its original condition tesla may, said it makes no profit from the uninstallation of the solar systems though uh, purchases could make more sense according to elon musk on twitter elon's been touting the lower purchased pricing for instance and saying that actually for many people purchasing does make more sense it's expensive but there's a new selection page. If you want Tesla Solar, you can now choose just three packages. Small, medium, large. Small array, $7,000. Medium array, $14,000. Large array, $21,000. All the details online. And I'll put up a link to Engadget in the show notes if you want to read more. Okay, let's get on to our question of the week. The first one we've done since I took a bit of a break and took a week off. And drove around Tuscany in northern Italy, which was 
utterly delightful. So we're back with a brand new question, and it was quite a simple one. I hope a simple one anyway. And we were asking you how should EV, or how should car makers generally, uh, not just EV makers, but how should car makers advertise EVs? Should they even advertise? But how should car makers advertise EVs? And thank you very much to everybody who replied. We will kick off with the reply that I got from Hi, H-A-I, by offering to install free charging stations at customers' homes, uh, a $500 promotion, offering free battery checkups in the first five years. That's how they should be advertised. Lisa Allen said, I think one of the best ways to get EVs into the mainstream is by featuring them in the media. A Tesla X was featured in the X-Files, Model S in The Flash, an Audi EV by Tony Stark in the new Avengers movie. And James Bond will be driving the new Aston Martin EV, a subversive and yet effective way to get them in the public mind, not with above-the-line advertising, but with product placement. Dan Hersher says, I think a series of TV advertisements, each highlighting a specific benefit of EVs, would be a good idea. A couple of ideas for particular adverts. Uh, one of the ideas is it shows a person who's late for work gets into their ice car, the tank is empty, uh, they've got to stop at the gas station, and that put, makes them really late. Look, not, we all want run late on a Monday morning. Um, the screen cuts to an EV owner unplugging their car in their driveway, looking at the battery bar, which reads 100%. And a voiceover that says, with an electric vehicle, you get to be your own gas station. Start every day with a full tank. I love it. It's a brilliant idea. It's one of the best things about driving an EV. Because you can, if you want to, leave the house every morning with a full tank. Now, we don't. Most people don't. We just tick down through the week. My wife does maybe 20 miles a day. And with the new Renault Zoe that's knocking... This is the summer now, so we're knocking back about 180 miles of range. She doesn't need to charge all week long till we go somewhere. Like we went shopping this week and tried some new charges at the supermarket. Charge there for free. Uh, another idea, by the way, coming from Dan Hersher says an ice driver's car making clunking noises and breaking down on the side of the road. Another shot of them looking at an extensive repair bill as for the EV for sale. Uh, the EV for sale drives by the voiceover says, with only 20 moving parts compared to over 2,000, avoid expensive maintenance and repairs. You could do so many of these for the many ways EVs are superior to ICE vehicles. People will flock to EVs when they understand the benefits. Yeah, that's right, actually, Dan. One of the things that has only just started happening, I think in the last three months, maybe five months, is mainstream advertisers, mainstream car companies advertising. That some of the best stuff I've seen is for the Audi e-tron, by the way. And it's just, it's great the way that they've embraced advertising EVs generally to the mainstream. I think they're doing a really good job of it in their adverts. You know, I don't particularly agree with the way Audi are doing their experiential stuff, which is to turn up at Tesla... Uh, cheaper charging stations and trying to persuade Teslas whilst they are charging on a network built by Tesla at a very fast speed that they should be thinking about the e-tron a car that doesn't have its own dedicated network that isn't as easy as just turning up and plugging in well, okay, I know there are systems in place now but y you get what I mean the Audi e-tron advertising has been brilliant it's just the kind of activations they've been doing with the general public are weird how would Anthony Smith says advertising electric cars needs to be a balance between performance, engineering excellence, and ease of operation? If you recall, the original Infiniti Q45 commercial showed the engineering excellence, the comfort, the performance, using a camera angle that gave the illusion of being in the car. Electric cars and advertising them need to focus on how it would be to own and use an EV on a daily basis while highlighting why they are superior to ICE cars. Neil on YouTube says the best advert for electric cars is to show them being driven around in real life by real people. Um, often, I think Tesla should advertise by just delivering more Model 3s as quick as possible. Now, that's a good point as well. But should Tesla advertise? When do they need to start? Will they ever start? And how should the other car makers be advertising their EVs? And should there be central campaigns as well? There are in some places, of course, Electrify America, the body set up with Volkswagen's You Did a Very Bad Thing money. 
they've largely been making some pretty good adverts, which have include, included Teslas. There's a big energy company, EDF, Electricité de France, and they are one of the what they call big six energy suppliers in this country, where we can choose who our energy supplier is. And they have, what's this called? Generation Electric. They've been running some adverts on TV with Teslas in and with all sorts in. And that's really, really good. I'm not quite sure what their call to action was at the end. Even if there was a thing they were selling, maybe it was just brand awareness or trying to kind of associate with EVs a little bit. Maybe there was. Maybe they've got a tariff or something. I don't know. Maybe the advertising didn't work in that case because I can't remember what they were advertising. They were just saying, EDF, EVs, double thumbs up again. We love you. Maybe there was a particular website or tariff that they're doing. I look, I forget. Hey, thank you so much to everyone who got involved with Question of the Week this week. Let's set a new one. And you know what? The My V Question of the Week is set by one of our listeners this week. Brian C. sent me this. Petrol users pay by quantity. EV drivers should also pay by quantity. All charging companies should be required by law to charge per kilowatt hour. Do you agree? Now, most charges that I go to do, but in many parts of the world, you charge per minute. And some people think that is a better way of charging. So what do you think? All charging companies required by law to charge only by quantity. Do you agree? You can email me your thoughts, hello at evnewsdaily.com, or get onto Facebook and YouTube, and I'll check out your comments. Thank you to 235 patrons of the podcast, our premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, all premium partners. Our partners of the show, David Allen. David's a long-time supporter of the message that we give out on this podcast. OEM Audio of New Zealand and evpower.co.nz if you are in New Zealand. I'm hoping you have gone into your browser and typed in evpower.co.nz. Hello to Paul O'Connor, Blake Boland at EV Life Island, and tryev.com. I've got some big news coming soon from Try EV. And all of the exec producers, I, look, I know it's a long list, but I just love reading name, I, these names out because it gives me a, a warm and fuzzy feeling every time that there are individuals all around the world supporting the message that we give out. Alan Robson, Alan Shedd, Alex Banahini, Alexander Frank, Anders Hove, Arid Gierschkalsveen, Ashley Hill, Bjard Fuchstack, Barry Penniston, Bob Muir from gingercomputers.com, Boris Life, Borisov, Brent Kingsford, Brian Thompson, Brian Weatherall, Cesar Trujillo, Charles Hall, Chris Hopkins, Craig Coles, Craig Rogers, Damian Davis, Dan Fairs, Darren Bird, Darren Sant from Yorkshire EVs, Dave Dewson, David Barkman, David Finch, David Partington, David Prescott, Dirk Rotsatz, and Don McAllister from screencastsonline.com, who finally, finally got his beautiful red multi-coat Model 3 and was so chuffed with it. He was saying to me this week, they give him the usual 15 minutes handover spiel, like, oh, you only got 15 minutes, ended up giving 45 minutes because the guy doing the handover at Tesla was just so damn nice, had the time, wanted to talk to... Don about his brand new car. He had one cancellation. I hope I don't, he doesn't mind me saying that, but he put it on Twitter, so I think I'm allowed uh, to say that. He got a text. It was pretty close to like the day, if not the day before, of when he was going to go and pick his Model 3 up and Tesla text and said, no, it's cancelled. But obviously, you know, within a day or two or within a very short period of time, he was then rescheduled and he has it now anyway. But interesting. Enrico, Stefan Schillo, Frederick Rovick, Free Jewel, a.k.a. James, George Clargo, Ian Griffiths, Jack Oakley, James Storr, Jason Fan, Jeff Irby, Jeff Helsinki, Je- Jerry Allison, Jill Smith, Jim Morris, one of our new executive producers that we mentioned earlier in the show today, John Bailey, John Lacey from Click Clack Video NZ, John, who is Beardy McBeardface, and Kent EV is on Twitter. John Nodell, Juan Gonzalez, Ken Morris, Kevin Merson, Carl Mayen, Lars Dallager, Lawrence D. Allen, Leo, Leger Grigil, Louis Hopkin, Luke Cully, Marcel Lohman, Marcel Ward, Mar- uh, Marlin Shell, Martin Croft, Matt Piscioni, Matthew Ellis, Matthew Gribby, Maz Shah, Mia Oppelstrop, and Michael Pastroni. Michael Cuffin, Mike Rogers, Mike Winter, Nathan Gore Brown, Neil E. Roberts from Sussex EVs, yesterday's guest on our Saturday special. Have you listened to it yet? If not, it's waiting for you. It's yesterday's interview. Neil was amazing. Ohad Aston, Paul Ridings, Paul Seeger Smith, Paul Stevenson, Barry Simpkins, Pete Glass, Pete Orton, Peter and D. Roberts from Oxfordshire EVs, Phil Mouche, Pontus Glimbad, Rajiv Narayan, Ralph Jensen, Renee Schneider, Rob Cooling, a previous guest of this show, 
Uh, Rob Hermans, Robin Tanner, Rupert Mitchell, Sarah McCann, Sari Kangasodja, Saiki Payne, Steve John, Stuart Hanna, The Limousine Line in Sydney, The Plug Seeker, and his YouTube channel, Tim Gutteridge, William Langhorn, and Zach Hurst. Thank you very much to Walter McVean as well, who, uh, as we all do, sometimes people support more on Patreon, they support less, and he said, look, I've been falling behind, I'm super busy, I've got a backlog of EV, EV podcasts to listen to, so uh, he's shuffled his money around a little bit and sent me such a lovely note to say, oh, I hope you don't mind. Look, any time, if you want to stop any supporter, one month, enough, done. Um, just listening is support enough. So God, never feel, goodness, never feel bad. Never feel bad about either going down or cancelling. I'm just so appreciative that people around the world will help me make this show. Well, there are 553 previous shows in the archive now that you have funded. The new ones come first and free and automatically for the subscribers. Oh, it's a free subscription, though, so you might as well get it by hitting subscribe in your favourite podcast app. On the socials, I'm Evie News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow for a brand new week. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.